Hello YouTube. Uh, so on here I've noticed a pretty big absence of uh, information, uh, even in the most comprehensive Mr. Cool uh, tutorial videos on uh, the line side covers. I mean, how complicated can they get, right? But uh, if you found this video, I assume that uh, you've stumbled across a problem yourself and uh, Hopefully you'll find an answer here. It's an hour long, so, you know, I'd hope so. But I am also just a normal dude. So, um, yeah, your mileage may vary, but I, um, it's, it's, uh, this installation I have here, this weird circuit board thing on the side of the house. Yeah, uh, I did that and it's working. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go over the details of it, um, better than hopefully a lot of other videos you've come across because um, again this is an hour long and it's not just on the line sets <laughs> and it's also on a uh, um, little bit a uh, little bit happens back here you can just skip through stuff if you don't need it but uh, yeah a little bit about the stuff back here about uh, the brackets but uh, yeah not not uh, not a fully comprehensive video, so I, I won't be titling it as such. And uh, yeah, let's, let's just uh, get into it, all right? Mr. Cool. Mr. Cool. Why? Why? Mr. Cool, Mr. Cool, why do you hate me? Okay, so cutting the line set, like I measured roughly where I want it to land on the vinyl siding, and also tried my best to account for on here where you want it to go in, because you don't want it to hit this line right here, uh, the connecting piece, you want it to be uh, I don't know, about a quarter, half an inch, or half an inch is probably too high. So somewhere kind of maybe just below the middle towards the side of the line, maybe, just to account for, um, like, seasonal uh, changes where there's, like, you know, exp thermal expansion and all that fun stuff. So did that, and... Uh, um, and then I put the pieces together because they don't come in one piece. I put them together so that I could cut it all at once without it potentially shattering. Like I've, I've tried cutting just a single piece before and it ended up like uh, splitting at a spot I didn't want it to. So cut, doing it this way so far has yielded perfectly done cuts. All right, so now we're gonna gonna do this piece here which I went outside and measured I basically uh, I put uh, one end I put it through all the way on the inside so that outside it was poking out and then uh, I uh, uh, it fit the uh, top part of it was was it's a good here but uh, on the bottom it, I'm gonna try to cut it a little ways away from the easy spot uh, and uh, then work my way towards the easy spot, which is up here. And that way, um, the the uh, outside the outside piece uh, that you put on the other end here, and it slides in. That'll that'll sit more um, square, I guess, because um, uh, when you put this in, of course, you want like when you put the hole in the wall, you're 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 that has a slow, um, a very slight um, slope to it, so that the for the drainage of the waters. Yeah, but anyway, back to this. Uh, yeah, gonna, gonna be cutting so that the that the that other piece that goes on the end here sits more square outside, so that you know when you're putting on the the rest of the line set uh, outside on the house that it's also like square with that end piece. It's a minor detail, but it all helps a little bit. So here goes on the cut here. So we're going to start at this kind of awkward spot 
there and then work our way towards that actual groove that's so easy to cut into. And uh, yeah, it's best to have it mounted so that the place you're cutting is close to whatever you've attached your thing to. Uh, and yeah, you kind of just start. You gotta get a, get a good start there. Slow. Slow start, establish your spot. And I'm slightly angling it so that it goes into the groove. And I'm not putting very much pressure on because that'll just give me a hard time if I'm trying to slide it back and forth like this. on so that I can get myself into that groove. I might. Yeah, so I think I'm about in that groove here now. Yeah. I want to keep an eye on both sides too to make sure it's not going diagonal or something. Which I'm good on right now. Uh, all right, so that's seems to be pretty good there. I'll try to keep this blade to level uh, with your floor. All right, so that's that's probably good there. I'm gonna go to the other side now. So I'm just gonna cut the groove straight because it's kind of hard to keep it because you've, you've started an angle here and you can see I kind of started doing a little bit of a slope there but caulk will hopefully um, account for that pretty well so yeah now I'm just going to go to the other side here and uh, yeah just just do that one normal super picky you could maybe even do some sanding of that uh, and uh, smooth out rough spots and uh, yeah <laughs> all right and for caulk uh, I'd recommend um, using this for the exterior of the house uh, you could use the white one or the clear one they're um, depending on what you just want to do um, all right, so I might not need to use it here. I'm not sure yet until I try to mount the head unit, but this doesn't seem too too bad. But uh, on one I had it where, yeah, the bottom part was poking out more and uh, it prevented the, the head unit from going, uh, from mounting properly on the bracket. So I ended up using this, this tool here. Um, uh, it's a, it'll cut through metal and it cuts through plastic just as <laughs> more easily. And uh, yeah, so yeah, you just would snip off the bottom part here, whatever's really poking out. And uh, that's pretty much the bottom. And uh, yeah, snip it, snip it, snip it, snip it, snip it. It'll probably look a little bit messy, but as long as that head unit gets on there, it's all good. Um, and uh, yeah, if it is going out like that so much for you, maybe you wanna wait to caulk it until you know for sure that the head unit's gonna fit on there. Nice fluorescent light there. No, no, that's, uh, that's the hole still. Um, 
So yeah, I just want to quickly mention, yeah, you keep the drain hose on the bottom. Hopefully you're looking at the, the manual here. You should read through it, but yeah, it doesn't cover a lot of things. But yeah, make sure you keep that drain hose uh, on the bottom of this. And uh, it'll go down. And uh, yeah, yeah, and you'll, oh, so yeah, you definitely want to keep a slight slope here. So that this, this thing should poke out at the bottom at least a little bit. As you see at the end there, you put that end piece on from the outside and see how it raises, it raises the end there like a, like an eighth of an inch or so. So, yep, definitely want to keep this thing sloping a bit. Okay, so here I am up on a, a shorter ladder than that one. Um, working on uh, routing this through. And yep, there's another hole, so... Yeah, it's, they're basically going to go, that one's going to go down here with this piece. After I put a normal piece in between there, it's going to go down. And then uh, we'll use another one of these down there to go right. And, uh, yep. Yeah. And then this one's going to go down, and it's also going to go to the right. I'm going to try to line them up so that when this one goes down... They're both kind of going to start going right, uh, sort of the same, in the same area-ish. And uh, yeah, for every uh, a foot, uh, um, yeah, for every foot, you're supposed to have like a quarter inch slope. So if I go, if I were to go straight over here, like nine feet or something like that, that'd be like the that end over there would be about 2.4 inches lower, 2.25 inches lower than, than this one, like for the minimum slope. Uh, that's what I read. And um, yep, so something to keep in mind. Also, uh, you might want to uh, avoid maybe drilling into like, like this. This tiny spot right here where if you have vinyl siding anyway you might want to avoid doing that okay so here I am in the process of attaching an 8 foot long backing section to what I'll call the hood backing which is that smaller cover section that attaches immediately outside of your hole for every piece that's going down vertically, big or small, you might want to check for level like this before you pre-drill the holes for your screws. Also probably obvious, but when pre-drilling, you'll want a drill bit that is thinner than your screws. Also if you are going to use a, a miter saw for this, like I have here, this is a, a larger miter saw, I think it's uh, like a it's 12 inches instead of the smaller 10 inch ones and uh, using the uh, 96 teeth uh, 96 teeth blade here and uh, that's for for fine cuts on plastic basically and you could use it on a bunch of other stuff but uh, yeah this this yields uh, a really fine cut on uh, plastic material which I'll just show right here and, uh, all right, so, turn the vacuum on. Right now, and uh, there she is. Very smooth. Yep. And uh, yeah, you definitely want to, if you're also just new to miter saws, you want to leave the blade running at the bottom until it stops after you've made the cut.
and you probably want to do some practice pieces beforehand um, on, a, on a length you won't maybe need so much. So here are the screws that I'm using there, those dark ones, it turns out, yep, they are two inches. And um, yeah, suggested uses, exterior siding. Um, yeah, they are resistant in some way or other to, uh, to stuff, but I also spray them anyway with uh, some uh, Rust-Oleum, mm. which is this stuff right here. You can get satin, you could get gloss, you know. This is the, just the one I got. Back to this though. So yeah, you know, once you put a hole through your wall, just to keep track of your layers. So this was our exterior siding, then below that had some polar wrap. And then uh, after that we had, uh, looks like some plywood or something. And then another, usually you only have one, I think, of plywood. This was just an older part of the house that I think had seen. Like this is actually like, I think the previous siding on the house or something like that. So, and then, uh, yeah. Yep, so, yep. So for an example, since we kept this, this, uh, this over here around, um, this is a, one of the holes we put into the house in an older area of the house. If you if you have a new area, well, you'll find out what you have when you put the hole through. But uh, this, probably, I probably could have just gotten away with like, a, I don't know, you'd want to measure it, but this is a two inch screw, so I probably could have gotten away with an uh, inch and a half, maybe. And um, then not worried as much about potentially maybe going through electrical stuff, uh, particularly in that spot of the house where we didn't know what was behind the walls. Turned out all right though, but uh, better to be safe than sorry. So yeah, if you're uh, as overly thorough as me and you're, you're spray painting screws that you might not need it anyway, um, it's, uh, it's good to throw them onto some old cardboard like this and um, just a box you have from Amazon or whatever. You just drill them in the first time with a, a drill. It seems to work best. And then after you pull them out of those holes, uh, you can just reuse them. And uh, yeah, that's a way to get spray paint everywhere that you want on the nail. You don't really need to get the tips because those are going in your house, safe and sound. So I recommend doing this on, on, your, on your house's floor if you can, rather than on the siding. But uh, see, I've put that in and I've twisted it a little bit uh, clockwise and I'm gonna twist the rest of the way with a wrench because uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of hard to do the other way. So, yep. And uh, that worked, that worked all right. Maybe doing it on the side of the house isn't so bad, but depending on where you have your line set, because uh, you can see up there, it's going to get a little tricky with the gap between the ladder <laughs> uh, line set. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Something to keep in mind. Also, uh, you might risk breaking that center point there if you do, if you commit to doing that the whole way. Sometimes uh, it's a little bit harder than others and you probably want to, towards the end of pushing it and once you're struggling with that middle piece, you want to clamp down on the outside and then continue to rotate that until it's in place okay so uh here like yeah so you want you don't want the the uh the vinyl siding to be like pushed in all the way like deforming basically uh when you put your nails in it's a uh, you probably wouldn't anyway, but uh, just uh, mentioning it. Uh, and uh, for this piece, so you can see the bottom one below here, how it is slightly at an angle there uh, for drainage. I went a little bit over the uh, aforementioned uh, um, 20.25 um, inches uh, for every uh, 
that foot is supposed to go down. So like that end right there over there is about three inches difference in height. And um, that would be um, the minimum for 12 feet. And this is about maybe nine and a half feet. So I should be very good. We'll see that. And uh, yeah, so now I'm trying to do the same thing up here slope that one down and um, I'm trying to make it a little bit easier on everything hopefully to have this piece see how it's not quite level it's sloped a little bit already there so like I slipped this piece and this piece right here um, very slightly uh, so as to have this here because if this was perfectly level, then uh, obviously you're going to have to be bending this piece here and a little bit, a little bit more. So uh, hopefully, since it's more evenly distributed, there's less gaps when you actually go to um, uh, connect everything together. Um, less gaps meaning like between here and here. Um, yeah. Um, I experiment with what works for for your uh, uh, for yourself. Yeah. So this is one that was particularly bad. I didn't even try to mount the unit with it on there because it was poking out like like uh, like almost an inch, maybe like three quarters of an inch or something. So I shaved it back a lot and did a test run, and it worked fine. So that's great. Um, so yeah. I, Put a bunch of that off and uh yeah now i'm gonna apply just a little tiny bit of caulk just around here um probably not really not necessary it's pretty tight but it's a little bit a little bit again but um also up here i was considering doing like toggle bolts down here where there is no stud behind it on like this or over here but then i took a Look at the pictures of when they did the framing on the house here. I'm lucky to have those. And um, like the stud finder didn't see anything. Well, it saw stuff, but it was unclear what it was seeing. Um, by the way, uh, uh, this is a generally really good stud finder. It's uh, yeah, Franklin sensors. I think this one has like 13, 11 sensors on it or something like that. Um, yeah, Pro Sensor. They have different model numbers. This one's on there somewhere. Maybe it's uh, visible. But uh, yeah, like you just take it and uh, like there's there's a stud there. And uh, yeah, corresponds to yeah. So, but um, yeah. So this is a good stud finder most of the time. But up here it wasn't really. Um, okay, I did find something there, but that's kind of funny because, um, basically I like this level and all the way up to the ceiling, there's a huge like LVL beam. And then there's also like two layers of like horizontal studs, which I found out like when I put this hole through here, there was a stud, like I was lucky cause I didn't fuck, I didn't even search for that. Um, uh, I was just searching for vertical studs, like at this level, I didn't expect there to, like I thought the LVL beam was going to be like way up there, but, uh, and it kind of is, but there's also two studs, horizontal, that like run right across here, and uh, so like that's where this thing might not work so well, because like, oh, if I do it like this, oh, they're all lit up, but if I do it like this, it's just like, it's not sensing anything, probably because it's just like everywhere, I guess. So, something to keep in mind there. And uh, yeah, well, I'll get back to it. But yeah, toggle bolts are a are good uh, option probably if you, if you don't have any studs or if you only have one stud. Like I thought I only had one stud here in the middle. So that's what I was putting these guys through for. And then I was planning to do toggle bolts everywhere else. Um, Cause uh, yeah, they, they're, they're a little better than the those, those little like plastic things that uh, came with the 
the uh, Mr. Cool DIY kit and come with so many other things. If you're holding something sort of heavy, it's probably like they make even pretty small toggle bolts. So, yeah, this is not idea. All right, so prepping this to go through the wall, and um, yeah, here what I did was I cut this this part off of the end here that was covering this because they, they give you this anyway and you're going to be putting that over that after you put the that, that black sticky pad they give you over these vi anti-vibration things so yeah I cut this down to here so it would also be easier to put this uh, this uh, tape on and it start down here and go up here and the reason you do that is to uh, prevent rain from getting in between the tape. As you can see, the rain will just roll down here and I'll get in. So that's important. You have to do that all the way up. And at the very end, you'll use duct tape or something because this stuff isn't sticky. It's only sticky at the very start. And then there's, there's no adhesive whatsoever. So, yep. So there's the state of this end here. If you want to duct tape all of it, you might want to wait until it's poking through the house. Um, you might consider it because then once you bend this down, it'll allow it to bend more naturally. And then put some duct tape on it as far as you can, really, anyway. Because, yeah, you obviously won't be able to get in the hole that well anymore. If you, if you are doing this alone, um, it is possible to do this part alone, if a little bit tricky. Uh, I want to tape these so that the drain hoses will be on the bottom once you slide it in. Uh, with some painter's tape, probably. It's probably the best thing because it'll come right off and um yep that'll it'll work if you got a decent amount of gravity on the other side to help you pull this cord through anyway uh yeah oh and also i should mention uh here i wrapped this conduit in there there's nothing Securing it there. I did that on others. It really doesn't work very well because uh, I think what they're expecting you to do with something like this Because um, you you could take this screw off and the screw over here off and you could put um, You could put something like this on there, right? You, you could uh, liquid tight fitting type B um, I use these on the, uh, the the condenser unit outside and on the shutoff switch outside. And you could use those here, except once you put something like that on here, that hole that you drill in the, the wall is not going to accommodate it um, as is. You'd have to modify, which is what I did on the other holes, to where like to the point where it's almost pointless to have it there in the first place which is why i'm not doing it on this one i basically shoved this cord as deep as i could in there it should not go anywhere there's no good reason for it to once it's all strapped to the house tightly and everything and even if it did it could go like it could go it's it's not it's really not this is the point there so yeah um it's something to consider. I'm not saying you should absolutely do this, um, but um, yeah, it's, it's better than just, uh, I think it's at least better than leaving the, uh, the, just leaving it without any conduit whatsoever, right? So yeah, uh, something to consider there. So I'm uh, just, I'm doing the bracket now and I'm like, I already had the, markings on the wall and everything, but uh, I'm just doing a double check and I thought I'd bring up uh, uh, the, so the way I put the markings on the wall in the first place is to have the hole be slightly off of what they officially recommend here to accommodate for 
to accommodate the that conduit that I wrapped around the power wire. And because uh, the last time I did this with the connectors on that conduit, um, it was a very hard fit. It, it needed to be sort of a little bit more where I put it now. Um, and this is what I did downstairs on that one I just did, and it slid in very nicely. And so I'm going to do it up here too. But uh, yeah, if you're going to use conduit the way I did, then you might consider this. Might work just fine without it as long as you're. Uh, it might work just fine with just the regular hole that where you where they tell you to put it. If you're using conduit without the connectors, I haven't tried that, but um, yeah, uh, it's uh, something to think about there. So here's a pack of the aforementioned toggle bolts, and um, as you can see, it comes with the screws and the. Or the bolts and the uh, the other things, um, these things right here, but it doesn't come with uh, oops, uh, doesn't come with the uh, washers. So you need like these are three eighths. Uh, the hole is three eighths, and the uh, it's an inch. Um, um, radius or something. Uh, so. Yep, the, the only downside about these is you have to make kind of a big hole uh, compared to just like a normal nail hole for them to go through because you have to kind of pinch them like this, shove them through while they're attached to this nail, right? You shove them through and then they kind of on the other side open up and prevent the nail from coming back out. But um, Yep, uh, so that's why you, you use the washer to try to, you know, minimize any gappage there. And, uh, yeah, only downside is you have to make kind of a really big hole. And to do that kind of accurately, you kind of want to work your, your, your drill bit sizes uh, up very slowly if you want it to be kind of accurate. Although it doesn't need to be so accurate, but, like... Because in the end, you're going to be able to move this around a little bit once it's in there, I think. I hope. We'll get there. But, uh, yep. As you might have worked out, um, I should have thought this through a little bit more and uh, maybe use different holes here. Uh, it's, a little, it's not too late for me to change things, but it's... Uh, eh. I'm just gonna commit to this. It's gonna just like lean slightly forward because you can, as you can tell, that washer once it's actually all the way in, it's gonna basically tilt the unit ever so slightly that way. But it's, it's so it's gonna be so slight, uh, so as to hopefully just be completely negligible. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, that's it for finding studs. If you happen to have any of these really strong magnets around, they will uh, find the screws that are in the studs and. Uh, well, the only downside with this is the screw uh, might be a little bit slightly off center in the stud. And also this thing is kind of like, oh, you can push a little bit that way, it'll stay still, a little bit this way, it'll stay still. It kind of takes some finicking to actually establish where that nail, that might not even be completely center on the stud, might be. So, um, yeah, and also when you're sliding around like that, depending on how fragile your paint is, it might kind of ruin the paint. So, not maybe not the best method, but it's something to consider. So, uh, this time um, I'm using uh, one of these steel fish tape things. I think it was like 20, 24 bucks on Amazon. Um, and it's just like 50 feet long. Um, which is more than what I need here, although, yeah, I only got this because I, I needed to route through 44 feet of, uh, of conduit. Before, I was using the, um, uh, sort of, like, vacuum method I might explain later, but, uh, this, this is better, really. So, yep, yeah, that's, uh, so, yeah, it's going through right now just 25 feet here cable and on the other end 
I have uh, some stuff holding it down. And uh, there's that. And uh, yeah, so as I get closer to this, you know, you just kind of have to fiddle around to really get the conduit to go kind of into this hole like an inch or so, however far you can really. And um, yeah, it works, works really well. And if you're doing the other method, you're gonna try connectors or something. Maybe you have a different hole that you're putting in the wall just to have conduit go through it. Doing something like that, then uh, yeah, you'll probably wanna put the connector on first. Um, like you'll have to run it across 25 feet of this and get it in there before you do the conduit stuff and all that. Yeah, it kind of makes makes a sense, doesn't it? Yeah, over explaining. So there we go. It's in there, and um, do check. And uh, yeah, this is what I used originally. If anyone was wondering, it's ultra thin diameter, superior tensile. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's fish line. It's uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's the diameter that it is. Maybe I should have gotten something slightly thicker, but this worked out for, for shorter lines. If it's like 25 feet or less, it should be manageable. You might have to get two strings going through the line, but um, uh, one did it for uh, a couple, of, or yeah, one, a single line did it for one of them, but the other one that was like a little bit over 25 feet. It was, no, it was pretty much exactly 25. That one had some trouble with it. So, but I managed to get it to work by tying two strings to the piece that I vacuumed through instead of just one string. And yeah, you'll, you'll have to, I think they sell things that you can vacuum through tubes, but they're like just kind of absurdly priced. Uh, I just found some very tiny piece of wood and a tiny piece of screw. And um, yeah, I, I made that work with this this fish tape. So uh, if that's the route you want to go with, it's it would be slightly cheaper than the 25 buck um, thing. And yeah, if you're only routing through like a short thing, like most people are, or their units like their outdoor units right below their head unit, and that's it. Then uh, yeah, this is probably um, a better method if you can't just route it through by sheer force. All right, I'm on the last one here. Um, quick note uh if it's not going if it's not if you can't get the, the indoor unit on the wall um with the drain hose directly below um then you might want to offset it just slightly like um here you can kind of tell it's well uh, i might have to offset that a little bit more we'll see i haven't uh, tried the hole yet but uh, you might want to push this slightly this way um and uh, it might go through then, and this will still be pretty much on the bottom. So I think you got a decent, uh, you know, slope on, in your wall sleeve, like so that uh, things run down fine, then uh, hopefully that's good. So uh, also just a quick note, yeah, when you're uh, trying to push things through your conduit, um, you definitely want to have this taped up properly so that it goes through. So yeah, I just used painter's tape and, um, let's see if I can even get this stuff off of here. So I used painter's tape and, uh, I mean, in the end, I probably could have just, um, clipped all of this stuff off, like everything but the green one, uh, which really helps you push it through. Um... I could have probably clipped all of these other guys off, but uh, I chose not to um, this time, uh, even though I probably will be clipping them off later. Um, but yeah, that's it, basically. But if you're going to keep these guys on, um, if, if it works out with your line set that you're going to keep those on, then uh, yeah, you basically, those little, those little... Uh, um, like protection things that they keep on the ends of these. Um, you want to probably get rid of those very carefully, very carefully with some scissors. You just kind of, um, yeah, snip them off 
and uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's a good way to get those through if you want to keep these intact. We're on the other side now of the 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 final head unit that I just pushed through, and yeah, you can see how like I offset it a little bit, and uh, actually worked out perfectly there where it's it's on the bottom middle there so yeah um I, like uh bear in mind i mean it, it probably would be fine either way but i did offset the placement of the hole compared to where the template had me do it as i explained before i did that on all of the the three holes here this time last time i followed the template to the letter and uh yeah it was it was a little bit difficult but i was also using connectors um, on the conduit back there and I had to mess with them again yeah to the point that like why did I use them in the first place kind of so that's why I didn't use connectors this time I just kind of pushed the conduit through into the unit as far as I could sort of deal but um, yeah something to consider and yeah, just really, it's really clear here. Like, uh, that's why I wrapped it the way I did. If rain fell down, I wouldn't get into those creases. So that's why I did it from down to the base. Because uh, if you wrap it that way, it'll rain will just go right on down. And I might duct tape the part of this that's outside now that I've bent it, but I might just leave it as is. Uh, I'm not really sure which is better there. No idea, so I might just leave it like this. Um, yeah. Um, attaching the drain hose now. First time I kind of well, didn't do this until like towards the end, where I'm like, oh, you can do that. But uh, yeah, this thing you have to kind of really shove it in there so that uh, the uh, well, this piece goes into it to about here which uh, fortunately it's all clear so you can see it. Uh, otherwise it's really loose. So yeah, uh, it takes a little bit of force to really kind of shove it in there. Not much, but you, you want to do that. All right. So if you want, if you decided to go the unorthodox route I did with, uh, you know, not the Mr. Cool official line set, but this fortress stuff that's a smaller profile and you somehow have this um, this kind of sleeve on your uh, line set like the new stuff is uh, would be easier than this probably because this I'm having to zip tie every freaking uh, to hope that it fits in there and it and I did test it in a small spot right there and it looks like it'll be fine uh, still a little bit worried but um, yeah so anyway if you decide to do that then you uh, um, you probably want to keep the drain hose separate from uh, these two when you're like tying them together to those uh, those uh, those guys in the back, um, uh, so that uh, uh, it can just kind of go on its own there in like the little corner, the nook of this uh, this fortress um, line side cover. Um, yeah, that's all. If you ever find yourself in this awkward situation um, uh, where you're having to try to wrap it around this kind of uh, bend here, well, yeah, and uh, also you don't have a place to secure it here because uh, you're unfortunately short one of those pieces and you didn't want to order another one. Um, so you just filled it in with some normal backing. Um, well, what uh, what I'm doing is uh, zip tying it here, here, and here, and uh, slowly clipping one at a time as needed so that I can wrap it around there. And uh, we'll hope that works. And uh, again, if you're working with a low profile thing and you happen to have like this older line set that you're gonna have to zip tie like that, uh, you probably don't, but, uh, if you do, then, uh, yeah, another thing you might want to do is keep the, this fat guy, uh, in the back, 
as opposed to in the front. So it seems logical, right? So that's why I put him, put him uh, back there. It's maybe a little hard to tell from this perspective, but yeah, the, the thinner one's in front here. Uh, all right, and uh, you probably want to avoid doing something like this, where, oh, look at that. I forgot to put a hole there. So uh, if I were to lift this, like, you know, it's just, it's gonna come off. So if you have one of these here, you're trying to put cable on it. The cable, the cable might want to uh, be a little feisty and push this out. So uh, when you put these down, you probably wanna have a screw next to it. Um, uh, so preferably on both sides. So uh, yeah. You probably want to, to have one like a pretty close to it at least, you know, definitely not far away or just nothing at all like I did right here. Oops. All right, so if you have a situation like uh, this where you've got a uh, new line coming out and for whatever reason you did all the other stuff before you got to this one, here and also you ran short of uh, material to continue this on and you're gonna have to tape up a bunch of stuff awkwardly behind like this very thin, air, thin area back there well in that case you you could take the route I took where I, uh, I kind of uh, put this 16 foot line up against that back there uh, before I taped it or anything, just to kind of get it into the position it's going to be in at the end, then tape it all up inside <laughs> the comfort of your own home. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, uh, it definitely beat what I did last time where it was, it was really awkward doing some of that stuff. All right. Oh yeah. And also down here, I might have to pull them apart more, but bear in mind that you can, like, kind of pull these apart. Uh, so that they'll go into uh, the condenser unit easier if you, you do that. So, yep. And when you're uh, connecting these up, you, uh, you want to check beforehand that, uh, that um, nothing over here is loose. Like on the previous unit I did, I was, uh, I don't know, I was just, I don't know how I stumbled upon it, but like I found out that one of these, uh, I believe it was one of these ones that w was uh, loose. Uh, so I, I ended up just tightening it. Um, I, I can't remember exactly how I did that, uh, but uh, yeah, maybe I just held, I did two wrenches and I held some pressure on this one while I tightened this, but uh, I just tightened it and it's, it's been working, although it's only been used since uh, the uh, the beginning of winter. So it hasn't seen a full summer yet, but it's, it's, it's been working fine without leaks. So yeah, knock on wood there, but yeah, you might wanna check that. Also, uh, you might, uh, if you have waited a while to install your units, and maybe if you even if you haven't, they might have been sitting on the shelves for a while. And uh, Mr. Cool actually updates their documentation. Like this is the third gen, and it saw an update to their manual as recently as uh, as uh, March of this year, which is like probably it's probably been a year now since the the gen the gen four stuff has been out. So. Hey, they update that stuff. I don't know. Uh, you might want to check it out. Yeah, also, like, I really hate, this is the part I hate the most, tightening these things and uh, up there on those. Uh, yeah, so uh, they, they just say, you know, tighten until snug and then tighten a little tiny bit more or something like that. And they give you these torque values too, like go uh, like the torque value of like what like 11 pounds maybe. I, you want to look at that, but um, so yeah, it's kind of hard to know. And also like they don't give a visual indicator, like oh it should look uh, this should look like like maybe maybe they could say oh you completely close the gap and then you twist a tiny bit more or something like that. Just 
I don't know if that's true or not, but like at least that's 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 the case, sort of uh, on most of what I've done. Done, I think. Um, I can't remember exactly. I have a few mosquito bites that are very annoying right now, and uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it, they could be a little bit more informative on that stuff, but uh, yeah, I wish I could give better advice there. And also with this. Uh, with this method that I'm kind of doing, like, as I get kind of a little bit closer to the end, uh, kind of do it most of the way, actually. But, yeah, I, uh, I do this with one hand, and then I kind of, uh, um, like, you might not need to do this. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I kind of, like, raise, like, I hold, like, with one hand this, and the other hand, the, the, the other end here, I kind of just, like, raise it slightly. Uh just because uh, if you're turning this and it's like making little squeaky sounds when you're turning uh, I don't know if that's it's probably not great but it seems to make less squeaky sounds if it is making squeaky sounds it makes less squeaky sounds if I if I'm like uh, kind of lifting and giving giving that one a little bit of lift so might not uh, affect anything really but I do it anyway uh, it's part in the portrait mode, but, uh, so, yeah, this part's also really kind of nerve-wracking. And, uh, the way that I've found works best for me is, um, uh, as far as, you know, cutting it and whatnot. I'm also giving myself all this extra length here that I probably won't need, but I just... Because last time I kind of, I think I had it just too short. Like, I only gave myself, like five six inches to work with and it got to be a little bit of a problem in itself so this time i'm giving myself i don't know if this is like 11 inches or 12 inches i don't know and uh it should let me because once you take this stuff off these cords are so are pretty flexible and there's room inside of there to kind of fit them so yeah if anything i could just always cut it shorter but uh it's like want to give yourself more rather than less so but anyway how i cut these now is like i uh i just bend them over like that um i should uh, probably use one that hasn't been cut yet but uh i mean i won't do the whole cut here but uh because i don't I think this one's even ready that yeah i need to probably cut it shorter i don't know but anyway yeah i just take it and then i start the cut like this by bending it and just not really going back and forth but just kind of digging in very uh lightly and kind of like once i'm in there i kind of uh i uh kind of uh stretch it out a bit like that and go very 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 slowly until i see some color like i'm i'm not I'm just applying some pressure and then kind of just digging it out and once you see some color uh once you see some color you can stop. Or possibly even before you see color, uh, you'll be able to just kind of try to bend a little maybe further and uh, it'll, uh, oh, there we go. There's some color here. All right, I didn't nick it. And uh, once you see color, you don't want to hit that area anymore. So you might want to go a little bit to the side. Get some, some color there. Just slowly dig at it. Very, very slowly. Yeah, 
I think that's maybe thread there. But yeah, once once you get enough of like these gaps where there's stuff going on, you can kind of dig in there in between them and do this. So very gently though. You can kind of like slide it in between the this outer insulation and the inner cords and pull it out. Being very careful also not to cut yourself. Uh, and, uh, and like that, it's just, uh, yeah, how you do it. And then you see, uh, and you just do that all around, like I just rotate it a bit and then uh, repeat the process all around until you, you get it all done. And then, oh, if you go back to the other one here, this example, and um, so, and then once you get it all, like cut all around there, if you have a long length like me, it's gonna be hard to slide it off. So you you wanna just, uh, um, you know, take take the, the end that would look something like, uh, see the other side, like this, and then you'd slide, slide this under, like a little bit like that, and then you'd rotate it, and then you'd make a cut like that. And then you would, uh, you just get in there with your hands and start ripping that apart and it'll come apart pretty well. And then you'll, you know, just bring the rest out like that. And then there, there you go. That's a, we'll have, it's a nice length. So, yep. Wow, that took a while. Oh yeah, and also if you have a bunch of extra wire hanging around, um, mess with that first. <laughs> do do a little bit of practice, just bending it and trying to cut it, and uh, yeah, uh, that's what I did here. This has been so long since I did it the last time, I kind of just completely forgot what I was doing. So now I'm pulling these guys through here, and uh, yeah, just... Uh, gripping it like so and uh yep yeah. just pull it through you'll need both hands for this because you're gonna also be guiding that uh everything into place but uh yeah and i chose the top three here and one on the bottom the one on the the uh bottom i guess is for the uh i'm planning to use for the uh the shutoff switch like the actual power to the unit and the top three are for the indoor units the reason i chose this is because uh, last time well i'll go over here real quick now, last time i chose this this little uh uh yeah and uh the bottom you see are on either side but uh, look at these screws. So that screw and this, this, uh, or bolt rather, these bolts were such a pain to tighten uh, because of the placement of these. And um, yeah, I suggest not using those two holes there. If you have to use one of those bottom holes, use that bottom middle one and it shouldn't be such a nightmare to get those on. I, it was a not, not a good time doing that. So, yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, for getting these little, the, for getting the holes in, um, uh, I, I uh, basically nailed or screwed these two, uh, this uh, one and this one. I just uh, took, uh, I just, uh, uh, screw them into a sheet of plywood. Uh, you could screw them into uh, anything that's like will prevent it from moving while you're hammering st stuff into the holes. I used a three-fourths. I think it's a three-fourths 
a thick dowel, which is like a cylindrical piece of wood. Uh, I think that was three fourths uh, size and diameter. And, uh, and I just uh, sanded the, the edges of it and uh, hammered it in and uh, these came off really easily. I you could probably use other methods, uh, but that's just what I had on hand and it worked really well. So in this clip here, I'm struggling a little bit. I have an eight gauge stranded cable wire that's required for the 36K condenser unit um, to power it. And um, I have put in the red and black cables and I'm trying to find a way to get the green cable in because on the previous unit that I installed a 28K unit, it was easy to get the 10 gauge wire into one of these green screws. It's so not the case here though. But I found on YouTube a number of people actually used this location and it worked fine for them and it is labeled as ground. So that's what I went with and it's working fine. Oh, there she is. So I just did a leak test and um, yeah, I couldn't spot anything. So uh, yeah, it's running, running good. Got everything covered there and um, yeah. Uh, maybe stuff some uh, something in there to keep insects from getting in but otherwise that's that's pretty much a wrap for this video and uh, I hope it was helpful to someone uh, there's a lot of things that I didn't see covered in other videos so uh, yeah I uh, uh, hope it helps um, uh, good luck if you're installing one of these and uh, if you post a question, I'll, I'll try to answer it I'm, I'm again no pro or anything just a dude, but uh, Yeah